What's the bigger motivation? Is it hanging on to the title or is it beating Dan Henderson specifically? Well, they, they, they're both one and the same, aren't they? They, they? You know, hanging on to the title means I beat Dan, beating Dan means I hang on to the title. So they're both one and the same. I want to keep hold of this. I'm very proud of having it, you know, and it would crush me to lose it in my first defence. So that is huge. Also, losing to Dan Henderson again is something that I just, I'm, if that was to happen, I'd struggle to live with that. And to lose my title, which is very dear to me now, uh, to Dan Henderson, be like, and to know that he, he's retiring. To be honest, if I lost to him twice, I probably wouldn't get a third match anyway. Um, nobody wants to lose the defence in the first one, especially to an old rival. So yeah, they're, they're both one and the same in equal parts. What's been the biggest change since you, since you won that gold belt? There hasn't really been many changes, Simon. You know, I still surround myself with all the same people. My lifestyle's still the same. Um, you get a couple of extra little perks here and there, wherever you go. You know, people call you champs, which is great. I love that. That's nice. Um, but really, nothing's the same. Business as usual. You know, I haven't let it go to my head. Um, you know, UFC give me a nicer hotel room. You know, just little things like that. You know, and uh, it opens a couple of doors here and there. But ultimately, things that matter. Nothing, nothing at all has changed. Talk to me about when you first got into the UFC and particularly when you were going through the Ultimate Fighter and before you fought Dan, you were a really polarising character. There were a lot of people who weren't in the Michael Bisping fan club at that point. There were a lot of people who wanted to see you get knocked out and were, sure. and were rejoicing when it happened. Sure. Now you're a pundit on Fox, you're a popular, <coughs> popular fighter on both sides of the Atlantic. People have got that respect for you now. Sure. How much does that mean and, and talk to me about the advice that the Michael Bisping of today would have given the Michael Bisping back then? See, back then I was surrounded by a set of idiots, to be quite frank, and they would encourage me to act a certain way. They would say, no, you've got, you got to play up to that, you've got to do that, you know, and you've got to... You know, you've got to be the bad guy, they love that, they love that, that's what's getting you all, and to a certain degree, I guess, that, that there was something in that. Um, so I was, in, I was being encouraged, you know, uh, as I've matured a little bit, I, 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 I'm not interested in what's right and what's wrong and what's best for that, I'm just being myself now and trying to be a good example for my children. I think, to be honest, I haven't changed much at all, I haven't changed at all, to be honest. I've matured, I've grown, I certainly look back, I see some things I've said, I've said this before and I cringe, I'm like, oh God, did I really say that, my God. Um, you know, what advice would I give? What advice would I give? I don't know, that's a tough question, Simon. What advice would I give to myself? I mean, ultimately, it all worked out in the end, right? So, I don't know if I changed much, you know? It all paid off in the end. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of instances that I regret, which I wish I didn't do, but I won't remind anyone that doesn't know. So I'm not going to say them. You probably know, but I won't say them. Um, but yeah, never give up, is what I'd say, because guess what? We got there in the end. And when you were coming up through the ranks, particularly when the UFC were giving a real push to the UFC and you were doing a lot of the, the media interviews, you were doing the lads mags and all that, it was back in the year when Ricky Hatton was on top of the boxing yep, world. Yep. And he filled out the Manchester Arena to fight Costa Jew in, sure. in the middle of the night. That's right. It was an iconic moment in British boxing. Yes. What does it mean for you to basically be repeating the feat, if you like? It's going to be in the middle of the night again, the arena sold out again, it's going to be a, a huge night for the sport of mixed martial arts in this country. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because when, the, when I first heard about this, it really uh, excited me because obviously, you know, I'm from Clitheroe, just outside of Manchester. Ricky Hatton is a national treasure. And I remember at the time when he, when that happened with Costa Zua, I just thought that was incredible. I thought that was so cool. Wow, they're having it in the middle of the night for certain time zones. You know, I was a bit younger then and, and an aspiring fighter. And I remember when the, the UFC came to me with the idea, I, I was all for it, you know. I was apprehensive on how the ticket sales might go because obviously I understand that that's a big ask. Uh, but, but a part of me just thought it was really cool and different and exciting. And I thought back to the Ricky Hatton fight, you know, and I thought, wow, wow, does that mean that I'm Ricky Hatton? Of, do, you know, do you know what I mean? I was like, wow, that's really cool and it's really, you know. And then, of course, the ticket sales sold out in six minutes, which again just blew me away and brought a lot of nerves. I was like, wow, that, that, it hit me. It was like a slap in the face. Like, whoa, we sold out in six minutes. That's great. Now I've got to go and perform. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, good point. And you're not bad at uh, predicting fights. We actually listened to an interview that you did before the CB Dolloway fight in the car coming over here. Right. 
Uh, you predicted you'd beat CB Dolloway. You predicted that Luke Rockhold would beat Chris Weidman. Yes. You then predicted that you would fight Luke Rockhold and knock him out. All these things happened. Um, I don't know if you went down the bookies that early, but... Yeah, yeah, no, I didn't. I, I should have done, yeah. So, what's your prediction this weekend? My, for my fight? Yeah. Yeah, well, of course I'm predicting that I win. And the way I see this fight going, and without bravado or trying to sell the fight, this is how I see it going. I'm going to be too fast. And, and when I say too fast, I don't mean I'm going to be moving around everywhere. I'm going to be cautiously aggressive. And I've got to be cautiously aggressive because that right hand is a real threat and it's a real weapon you know and it can end the night in one shot we all know so I'm gonna be aggressive I'm gonna school this guy for two rounds no doubt I'm gonna to have to weather a storm here and there because he believes in his knockout power and he's gonna come forward and swing uh, right from the get-go he's got nothing to lose he says he's retiring after this fight he's got nothing to lose I had nothing to lose in the Rockhold fight you know so it does make you dangerous I know this only too well from my last fight so he's and he has the confidence he's gonna come forward and swing so there's good pardon me there's gonna be a few ropey moments where I might have to like you know whoa that was a close one or whatever but I see myself you know settling into a groove picking him apart bloodying him up get him a little tired and in the third round when he's tired then I'll go for the kill brilliant thanks very much my pleasure Simon